Hey, what's going on, social media family? I hope everybody is having an absolute amazing day. I know that I am. In fact, I'm having such a good day. I had to wear my tropical shirt. I have quite a few tropical shirts, and my wife says that you only need to wear them on vacation, but I kind of got a vacation spirit on me today, so we're going to go ahead and just roll with this. So, recently in corporate prayer, the Lord spoke to me a word that it is fulfillment season. Now, when you hear that word, a mature believer and an immature believer receives a word like that completely differently. An immature believer says, yes, Lord, it is fulfillment season. Make it happen, God. Mature believer says, okay, God, let's, uh, let's strategize. Let's go back over all my old prophetic words. Um, I'm going to get in. I'm going to get down to my foundation. I'm going to get in to repent from anything in my past season that I don't need to take forward. I need to get myself in the right place, the right position. I need my mind clear to move forward in everything that you have. I need to be the best version of me. I need to make sure I got the right people around me to be able to handle what is coming next. I remember um, I was at a conference one time with uh, Apostle Dutch Sheets, and he was teaching, and, and he said that he was uh, at a conference with Cindy Jacobs, and Cindy Jacobs came up to him and said, hey, Dutch, I have a word for you. He said, okay, let me pray tonight before I receive the word in the morning. I want to make sure I'm ready to receive the word. Immature people are like, oh, yes, give me, give me, give me that word. Give me that word. When a mature apostle prophet has a word for you, you need to get your heart positioned in the right place. Prosper your mind. Get your mind in a prosper state where you're ready to move. What is prosper to advance and move forward? Get your mind leaned into the Lord. You need to make sure you have the right posture in your spirit to receive this word. So Apostle Dutch said he came and Cindy Jacobs gave him this word and he stewarded it for about three months and he was at another conference with Chuck Pierce and Chuck Pierce came up and said, Dutch, I got a word for you. Apostle Dutch said, okay, wait till in the morning to give me the word and we'll pray. So he got himself ready, got in the right position to receive the word the next day. Then he said it took about like six months to steward that word. So when you get a word like this, mature believers, the ones that don't ever do anything in life, they think that prophetic words are adrenaline rushes. They don't understand that prophetic words can be literal mandates. Actually, if someone ever gives you a prophetic word and it doesn't uh, bring confirmation to your spirit, God will always speak to you first about something, okay? Please understand that. My life's not working, but somebody gave me a prophetic word. What if they missed it? What if they missed it? You got to know. It's, it's all You got to know you, okay? So this word, fulfillment. Uh, and so when, when I got this word, I, I said, all right, Lord, I want to make sure that I'm in the right place. I'm positioning myself to be ready. So I positioned myself, and lo and behold, God gave me a key strategy for one of my businesses. I was like, whoa. I have a ministry endeavor that I've been thinking about. And the Lord said, I want you to lean into that a little bit more right now. And I said, ooh, ooh, yeah, okay. And so fulfillment means you need to lean into God. So when I get a word like this, I think, why do I need to fast? I, I need to up my prayer time. I need to up my reading time. I need... Like if God says, I want you to, like let's say a certain ministry, I want you to lean in more to prophetic ministry. Start listening to more prophetic people. Get you two or three good prophetic voices. Um, read you some books on prophetic ministry. If if the if the Lord says, I want you to join, let's just say like your altar team at church. There's a great book by Pat Shatstein on the altar. There's a great book by Chuck Pierce on the altar. If God says, hey, I want you to be, you know, do something with intercessory prayer, you know, Cindy Trim has got a lot of good stuff on that. You know, whatever God says, if God says, I want you to be an entrepreneur, you, you start listening to the different 
voices, the Ed Millettes, the Jim Rohns, different types of, of, of people. So you got to figure out what God has called you to do and glean from voices. That's knowledge. Knowledge is, is gleaning from people who have been down a certain path and have paved the way and had success in something. Wisdom can come from God, okay? Wisdom, knowledge, understanding. You need all of those. So when you get a word like this or you hear a word about fulfillment, you really got to think about what is the next season of my life going to look like? I remember Apostle John Eckhart said this one time. He said that an apostolic mind lives 20% in the now, 80% in the future. Man, that's hard sometimes. But sometimes, you like the other day, I, I told I told my wife and kids, I said, I'm going to take a break in the middle of the day. I'm, I'm going to take a break. And, and I'm, I'm just going to take a, a break. And I'm going to go swim and hang out in the pool for, for a minute. I mean, it was 15 minutes and it was so hard for me to stop my day and take a break. But I stopped and I I thought, I thought, I was, I think, very, very successful people. Like somebody asked me one day, what do you do for a living? And I said, I think. What? I think. And then I put into action. I listened to the voice of God. I have a prophetic apostolic mixture. So I hear from God, get clarity from God, put it into action. Hear, clarity, action. Boom, boom, boom. This is kind of how we do things. And so I took a break. I couldn't take much, much more than a 15 minute break, but I knew that I needed a little, I call it block scheduling a lot in life. I do a bunch of 60 to 90 minute blocks and work on different projects. My mind works better that way. Yours may too. And so the fulfillment is coming. Imagine this, the Lord spoke to Noah and Noah went and sat on a tree stump and said, God, build the ark. And he just sat there. What if Esther said, oh, Lord, deliver my people. Give the king a prophetic dream. And I'm just going to intercede and fast. She did fast and pray and had her people do the same thing. But she also did the impossible See, God can do anything because he's God, but he is a God of partnership. He wants to partner with you. Okay? Think about Moses. Moses said, I'm going to sit right here by this burning bush, and I'm going to watch these people, the oppressed people, just march right past me. I ain't going back. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. Fulfillment. Imagine if you're Moses. I'm going to I'm going to free your people from oppression. Yeah. And you're going to do it. No. <laughs> but the burning bush said, you're going, dude. Come on, man. You got to get up. You got to man up on them. Burning bush could have been East Texan. I don't know. But. You got to understand when fulfillment, the, the fun part about a word like fulfillment is you get to partner with God Almighty to do what you're called to do. Man. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to wake up full of the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost, get you some coffee or hot tea or water or a Gatorade Zero or unsweet tea. I'm a health coach. I would say Gatorade Zero and unsweet tea. And get you a tropical shirt on, man, and just go for it in life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Come on. This is it. Fulfillment season. So what do you have in mind, God, on fulfillment? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got you, Lord. Okay. None of that's in my comfort zone. I don't have the skill set to do any of that. All that stuff's impossible. If it's going to work, it's got to be you, God. I'm in. Well, let's go. My wife always says, 
God, you have my yes before you even ask the question. You have my yes before you even ask the question. It's fulfillment season. Psalms 32, 8. I will guide you and lead you with my eyes upon you. I will guide you. I will lead you with my eyes upon you. Imagine a father with a little child on the little tricycle with the training wheels and a helmet on. That's you. Father God's got you. You're okay. He will guide you. He will lead you with his eyes upon you. When we realize that the fulfillment of our calling is more important to God than it is to us, we will understand that we want to do great things for God, but he needs us to do great things for him. And we get a partner. So this is how you can be successful in life. Pray dangerous prayers like, God, I just pray that you put your dreams and desires in my heart so they are your dreams and desires and not my dreams and desires. So therefore, I will carry out your plan, your will, your agenda, and not my own. That right there, my friends, is how you can be successful in life. Because you're not... Uh, operating out of your own natural mindset but with the heart of God and and there's such an umbrella of grace and protection when you do that and understand what the Lord is doing understand what he's saying and go for it just go all in with the things of God and remember that when you receive something from Lord from the Lord it is not an option in, in this day and hour, it is no longer, it never has been, but it's never been more relevant to society than it is right now. I'm speaking of your calling. When God calls you to do something, it's, it's not optional. It is a mandate. Let's go with it. We, we got to get up and roll, man. Come on. Fulfillment season is here. Get yourself in the right position. Posture yourself in the right spot with God. Lean into the Lord. Lean into mentorship. You got to have mentors in your life. Listen to the right people. Have people who feed your spirit and your soul. Okay. I love you guys. Okay. I'm going to go over the formalities. Everybody... When, when, when videos are over, they always ask me, hey, how can you pray for me? Can you tell me about your health coaching business? Hey, um, how can I get in contact with you? It's real simple. Go to jojodawson.net. And when you do that, you can find a, send me a prayer request. Ask me about our health coaching business we got. Um, you can find all of our resources about books or where to sew and all that stuff. Um, I love you guys. My wife and I want to make our life a resource for other people. That's why we press into God that what, what we receive, we can give out of an, an overflow to help humanity and society. I love you guys. Thank you for spending some time with me this morning. I look forward to hanging out with you again tomorrow. Talk to you later.